Hi, this is Joe from GRX and we have a video companion or an update to our main tutorial flight and cockpit tour video that we made a week or two ago and this one is all about trim and trim control. The reason it was not included in the main video was because it was still being tested at the time and we're happy now with the functionality of that and here is a video on how the JRX MD902 trim operates. First things first, before we can use the trim, we need to set up the custom commands that have been created. And that's done through the settings, keyboard or joystick. You can assign these trims to any button, any input device that you have for X-Plane. I'll show you where the commands are on the keyboard option. And it's 902 switches controls scroll down to the bottom and you will see the trim commands you can also search if you type in jrx trim there we have them isolated and the following are now all active and tested trim reset pitch up and down roll left and right your left and right trim rate selection which i will speak about next and the virtual cyclic center which I will speak about toward the end of the video. Once you've made your assignments to any input device, you just click done and then back to your aircraft. Trim rate selection, what is that? In my previous aircraft, users, customers and pilots have asked me to adjust the trim. It's too slow, it's too quick. This time round, we've added four levels of trim rate. That's the rate at which the trim changes when you're holding or beeping the command. We can check this on the tablet. We've added a new section here called trim rate control. This is on our custom persistence. So what you select will always stay until you change it. And there are four levels, zero to three. Because you may not like flying with the tablet open, I have added an audio tone, which will apply each time the command is pressed. Level zero is a dash. Level one is one dot, two dot, three dot for one, two and three respectively. I'll just give you a quick demonstration of that. Level one, level two, level three, and cycle back round to level zero. So you can hear what mode you're in at all times. Now we understand the tone selection system. You don't necessarily need to have the tablet open and that can be closed down and we will continue on. For the video, let's call up Axis Viewer from the plugins menu. This is a free download from the org store. Very useful if you're doing anything control related. Give you a visual representation of where your controller is. Okay, so our trim implementation directly manipulates the servos for the cyclic and the anti-torque pedals. So when you make your trim adjustments, you will see the controls move and stay where you left them. I will just give you a demonstration of the four levels. So we are in level zero. I've assigned a hat switch to my collective and another button to control. And we're manipulate on level zero, which is very fine. You may not see the controller move, but if you keep your eyes on the green circle, you should see that just there going off to the left coming back to the right. So level zero is very fine. Let's have a look at level one. Slightly more movement. Level two. Course. And level three. Very coarse. 
let's have a quick look at the anti torque pedals this is useful for longer flights where we have to have some pedal offset looking now at the trim reset command this will gradually return your controller back towards the center of the axis and the way this works you have to hold the trim reset button and anytime you release the controls will stop where they were left stop reset I mentioned earlier we have what is called a virtual cyclic center in reality the MD902 as far as I'm aware does not have a force trim system so why have we effectively added one well that is because many users or new users coming into the sim only have a short center sprung joystick and that can be problematic with x-plane helicopters now when this aircraft is flying the controls in cruise for example are normally left in this region here this front left quadrant and if you were to have a center sprung controller then you're always going to have to be holding that in this area and that can be quite problematic after a long period of time and unrealistic so we've added what we're calling a virtual cyclic center now if you've ever heard of a plugin called heli trim this does exactly what we're doing and i believe that this system has also been added to the rotosim ec135 and it's quite easy to operate and very helpful for all types of controllers but primarily aimed for short sprung sticks okay so how does the virtual cyclic center work let's imagine we're flying along in the cruise the controller is normally in this region here the front left quadrant if you have a sprung self-centering controller you're going to have to physically hold that there all the time to alleviate that problem we can press and hold our command set virtual cyclic center you'll see on screen the virtual cyclic that you can actually see that will freeze and then you can bring your controller back to any position that you desire and let go of the button you will then see the animation in the same place your real controller will be at a position you've chosen or back to its sprung center I'll give you a demonstration of that I use an exaggerated stick position so you can visually see the on-screen cyclic so we're flying along we're in a nice cruise you want to alleviate some pressure on your controller we're going to press the button we're going to keep the button pressed and we're going to return your real hardware controller back to any position that you like when you press this button you will hear a tone so you know it's being pressed like so my hardware controller is now back to its center but you'll know on the screen that the aircraft controller is where you set it and everything that you now do with your hard controller will center around this axis where the green dot is so for example you can still apply trim offsets and you'll still get the gradual reset and that is how the virtual cyclic center works i will put some links in the description with some other demonstrations it's not something we've invented it's something that we've implemented in the aircraft i will add some other videos that you can check out because it was problematic initially for some users a positive side effect of us refining our own custom trim system also allowed us to add some slight vibrations to the cyclic which are directly tied into the rotor movement 
and it also allowed us to have greater control over the SAS, the Stability Augmentation System. With the SAS on, the helicopter is nice and stable, it's nice to fly, everything is smooth. With the SAS disabled, there is no augmentation to your control inputs, so everything's going to be a little more difficult for you to operate the aircraft safely and effectively. With the SAS off, you'll note that there is increased vibration in the cyclic. And you also know that the manipulation now of the controls is a lot more coarse. And there will also be induced rolls and pitches and yaws at a random time. That is it for this video. The trim the trim commands and the trim controls. Anything I mention that has a link, I will put in the description. I'll also put the links for the JRX support forums there. And if you have any suggestions, comments, you can leave it on the video. I do check them regularly. And you can also reach out to me on the JRX forum for any of my aircraft. I always try and answer within 24 hours, normally a lot quicker. But that's it for today's video. So thank you and goodbye.